All right, so in this video, we are gonna talk about the Memphis Shades Road Warrior versus an FXRT fairing. Let's check it out. What's going on, YouTube? FXDLS Brooklyn is back in the building. And this has been a topic that has been highly requested as of late, and I am actually on a bike that is running a Road Warrior, so what better time than to talk about this topic? Before we get moving on this, we do have my good friend Lacey, aka Blade Brown, back in the building. And yeah, as you can see, he's on his 93 FXR, shout out to SL Cycles, running that Olin's. And I don't know, Lacey, what do you think, man? As someone who does not run a fairing at all, what do you think, Road Warrior versus FXRT? Um, I don't know, man. As far as like, I don't have like, the experience on either one, but I know I'm definitely jealous of you guys for fairing when it comes to like those long rides. Like, I ride mostly in the street in New York City, so I don't need one per se, but if yeah, we do like those 200 mile runs to like Bear Mountain, you're doing like 80 miles now, for the most part, getting smacked by that wind. I'm really envious of you guys. I wish I had one, so I don't know. I would say either or, I honestly say the truth, but uh, I like the one you have right now, the Memphis Shade. It's a little bit more sleek, a little bit more, especially if it fits that bike. I just feel like it keeps it nice and streamlined. FXRT is a little bulky, but it's got to be awesome though to have that much protection from the wind. So it depends on what your, your preference is, I guess. It's never too late to go the fairing route, man. I mean, yo, Memphis Shade, you know what I'm saying? Blade Brown, I'll let your boy like, give me like a promo code or something. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll, we'll reach out to Memphis Shades, man. Yeah. We'll, we'll get you that discount code. Alright, but yeah, we're going to be ripping around Brooklyn and the city today, and we'll talk a little bit about that dilemma. If you're someone who's not running a fairing that's trying to decide, you know, which route do I want to go. But as always, shout out to Blade Brown back in the building, crushing it on this FXR. You ready to get some miles, ma'am? Thank you. I'd love to. Let's do it. You heard the ma'am. Alright. A beautiful, beautiful early morning out here in Brooklyn. If you are on the East Coast, then you know spring is here, 100%. We're getting those, you know, we're getting those 70 degree days at this point. We're getting, we're getting actually 80 degree days coming up this week, so we're starting to get the transition where it's going to start feeling like summer out here, which is very exciting. If you're somebody like me, who uh, likes those humid summer days, yes, that's right, I actually do like humidity. <laughs> I know you probably think that's weird, right? But no, I like the, su I like the humid summer days. Alright, so yeah. A lot of you in the recent video that I posted where I was talking about things that I wish I would have known before pulling the trigger on an FXRT fairing, I got a lot of comments on that specifically asking me to talk about the comparison between an FXRT fairing and a Memphis Shades Road Warrior. So I don't know, I think I am at a pretty good place to compare both of them. On a Memphis Shades Road Warrior back when I ran it on my Lowrider S, I had accumulated about 35,000 miles on that fairing before transferring over to the FXRT fairing. On a Road Warrior, I've gone cross country twice, I've gone into Canada, I've put in many, many, many miles on a Road Warrior fairing. Whereas the FXRT, I've only been running that fairing for a year at this point, so also, you know, a year of clocking I think last year we hit like 15,000 or somewhere around there good amount of miles on the fairing so I think I'm also at a good standpoint to tell you a little bit about that as well but like we were talking to Lacey over there a lot of you are in a situation where you're currently not running a fairing you're running naked and you're ready to step it up so we live in a time now where you're just seeing the resurgence of the FXRT fairing. A lot of people throwing it on Dynas, Softtails, Road Kings, FXRs, you name it. So a lot of people are having to decide, you know, which fairing do I want to go with? Do I want to go with something like this, a T-Sport, like Road Warrior? 
or do I want to go all in on something like an FXRT fare? So I think I could break this video down into five separate categories that might help you decide you know which fairing is going to be right for me because again they are two very different fairings for two very different styles of riding so you want to make sure that you are getting the right fairing because especially if you go the fxrt route at the end of the day you're throwing down some serious coin to make that happen so let's get into it so why don't we go and you know in terms of the Memphis Shades Road Warrior versus an FXRT fairing and again I run the RWD FXRT but when I talk about FXRT I'm saying uh, pretty I'm just saying like the generic so whichever brand you're running whether that's IMZZ or Big Bear or whatever you're running any standard FXRT fairing All right, so category number one, and that's going to be cost. So, I've always been attracted to the Memphis Shades Road Warrior because Memphis Shades found a way, you know, back in, I think it was 2017, before they really got heavy into the T-Sport game, these T-Sport fairings, so it wasn't cheap, but then Memphis Shades came through and they were able to offer the same thing for a much cheaper price so i got a look but i think the last time i checked like you could run one of these fairings uh, for i don't know i think it's like a 400 500 range i'm not sure if that includes like brackets and windshield and everything i got a look it's been a while <laughs> but i do remember being impressed with the price point that Memphis shades was able to offer this fairing for Whereas now you go into something like an FXRT fairing. So an FXRT, you are definitely going to be throwing down north of $1,000. And that's just for the fairing itself. You're going to be throwing down north of $1,000 for just the fairing and the bracket itself. Now that's not where it ends. If you're going to go this route, you're also going to be paying for a 7-inch headlight. You know, because you got to increase your headlight size now. You're going to be paying for some paint, right? Because most uh, of these fairings are not coming painted. And you're probably going to be paying for installation. And at the end of the day, this is going to quickly accumulate to you throwing down some money for a very, very serious investment, right? It's no joke. So in terms of price, Memphis Shades Road Warrior has the FXRT fairing of anyone that I've seen beat at this point. So they're going to take it for price, 100%. Now, I have heard there has been folks that have commented on some of my videos talking about how they found one that's way cheaper on Amazon. I don't know anyone personally that's running an Amazon FXRT fairing. <laughs> I, I, I don't have any, I can't speak to that myself. But if there are cheaper options out there, I haven't really explored them. The big name brands that put them out that, you know, that I feel like you can trust, you're going to be throwing down some serious coin for them. So, category number two, and this is installation. Man, the Road Warrior fairing, there are a library of videos out there for how to install that fairing. And why is that? Well, it's because installation is really easy. <laughs> If you're someone who doesn't like wrenching or you're trying to just get more experience wrenching, I guarantee you can install this fairing on your own. Anyone can install this fairing. You need zero wrenching experience. The installation, they make it so easy. The directions are super clear. It's very intuitive. 
even without directions. And now not only that, but like I said, you have pretty much every Harley Davidson moto vlogger at this point has probably made a Memphis Shades Road Warrior install video. So you have a million different install videos of from a million different riders. So you're good in terms of installation on this fairing, all right? Installation's easy. You should not be paying anyone to install this. Okay, now let's go over to the FXRT fairing. This is where things are gonna change. That fairing is a different story in terms of installation. There is a lot that needs to be done, right? You gotta play around with the distance of the headlight. You gotta throw these brackets on, right? To make it fixed. You have to completely change out the front headlight. You might have to relocate your turn signals. There's a lot that's happening with the installation of that fairing. So me personally, I, I knew from the get-go that that was a job I was definitely not trying to get into, right? No way. So, I don't know too many people who have taken on that job on their own, hence why you see a million videos out there for installation on a Road Warrior, but now try to YouTube FXRT fairing installation not going to find much out there. And why is that? Well, it turns out it's really hard to do. <laughs> so, yeah, man, unless you're a pretty experienced and confident wrench, I do not recommend you try playing around with installation on an FXRT ferry. But a Road Warrior, anyone can do it. So... In regards to installation, once again, the Memphis Shades Road Warrior is 100% going to win that battle. Don't you love the Midtown Tunnel, especially when it's moving? Love it, man. right down the line the next category category number three is wind deflection so as we spoke to Lacey before we started this ride you know he was, he was saying yeah you know when we're getting upward in those higher speeds when we're riding together he's really getting punished by the wind you know which obviously you know you which that makes sense if you're running naked so let's talk about wind deflection, which is the number one reason why anyone's going to throw a fairing on their bike. Alright, so, in terms of wind deflection, obviously, obviously, the FXRT fairing is going to win that battle. When I'm running my FXRT on my Lowrider S, I could sit at very, very high speeds. I could pin that bike at a high speed and I could sit back and be super comfortable. Whereas on a Road Warrior, hitting those same speeds, I could do them. I could do them with no problem and I could hold them, right? But I'm not going to be holding them sitting back and being comfortable. I'm going to be holding them and I'm in it, you know, like it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> so in terms of wind deflection, nothing is going to beat an FXRT fairing. It's definitely got a Road Warrior beat of any size windshield because I've ran, you know, I've ran a 11, 11's on here now, I've ran a 13 and I've run a 15. So regardless of windshield, nothing's gonna beat an FXRT. You're just not gonna do it. So yeah, the FXRT, I think it's definitely gonna win that battle. Okay, category number four, which is very appropriate as we enter Manhattan with a little bit of traffic. And I talked about this in my previous video and I quantified it with a new unit of measurement, that's right, 
we do science and math on FXDLS Brooklyn. But this is the factor of throwability. So if I'm in low speed situations, if I'm in a bunch of New York City traffic or whatever I'm in, how comfortably can I throw around my bike with the ferret? I've said it before in a previous video, obviously if I'm running my Memphis Shades Road Warrior, I can throw the bike around way easier. I don't have to put as much muscle. It's way less effort to just throw the bike around. If I'm in this situation, which I'm in right now, running my FXRT, it's definitely you're putting a little bit more muscle to throw the bike around especially in the low speeds even in the high speeds you know if you're crushing twisties like i said you could sink both bikes with both fairings heavily into curves the fxrt fairing is not going to affect your lean angle on a curve you could still crush twisties if you have the riding skill but I did a full like 200 miles of straight twisties in the summer and I'll tell you what man that was like I, I felt it I felt like I had just gone to the gym or something you know so you definitely are not going to be effortlessly throwing the bike around into curves or just into low speed maneuvers like we're doing right now with a FXRT as you can with a road warrior all you New York City people, it's like the most iconic New York City image over there. It's just the smoke coming out of the manhole cover. Anyone ever wonder what that smoke is? Should someone be investigating that? That'd be a good picture too. <laughs> yeah, but where is the smoke coming from? All right, we are getting way off topic. So yeah, throwability, you're Memphis Shades Road Warrior, you're going to be throwing that fairing around way easier. So if you are primarily doing just a bunch of urban riding, kind of like how we're doing right now, if you know you're going to be doing mostly city riding, most a lot of low speed stuff, you might want to think about running a Road Warrior just in regards to what would be more practical, thinking about the correct tool for the job, right? So number five, our last one, and this is just what I think is the general bang for the buck. You know, like for the money that you're throwing down, what you're going to get out of it. And I'm going to leave it off on that. And I'm just going to say, you know, as someone who has run this Road Warrior for many, many, many a mile, you are 100% getting way more bang for the buck out of a road warrior than you're ever gonna get on any FXRT ferry. You know, just for the price that it comes in at and the performance that you're gonna get, you're definitely getting more bang for the buck for a road warrior. And again, that's taking into consideration that you don't have to pay for installation. You're probably not gonna have to pay for paint if you're running it in gloss black. Obviously, the road warrior is gonna be way cheaper than your FXRT. And then at the end of the day, you can do everything an FXRT is going to be able to do on a Road Warrior, if not better, thinking about the throwability into curves and low speed maneuvers. The FXRT is going to shine if you are crushing, straight crushing miles, if that's your riding style, to just collect as many miles as possible, go distances, do the long bike trips, and not only that, but do them at high speeds. So if that's something that you are doing, if you are constantly crushing miles at high speeds all day, then I would say it's worth it for the FXRT if that's all you're doing. But if you have more of a diverse riding style, if you are doing city miles, if you're doing suburban miles, if you're not doing long bike trips all the time, if you're not doing days where it's always 200 plus miles, etc. Then in terms of bang for your buck, you know, I think you're going to get more out of something like a road warrior, you know, and again, the biggest thing for you to know is the Road Warrior is going to do everything that the FXRT fairing will do, you know? I've toured so much on this fairing, 
you know, doing the cross-country trips, crossing international borders, really putting in the miles to tell you that the Road Warrior will do it, man. If you're trying to go fast and go far, this fairing will 100% do it. It has the performance. It's been designed very well. And I mean, if that's not enough for you to... But yeah, don't just take it from me. Take it from one of the East Coast Mile Kings, none other than Vong Asphalt, Mr. 4K in four days. He crushed all those miles at high speeds, not with an FXRT, but with a Road Warrior fairing. So if anyone's gonna really tell the story of what that fairing could do, it's definitely a Vong Asphalt. So I'm definitely not at that level last riding season. He definitely probably doubled my mileage. <laughs> but yeah. The fairing will 100% crush, crush miles at high speeds. So yeah, that, that's what I'm saying is like, for example, if, if you're on the fence about them and you're not someone again, that's doing high mileage days all the time, I really do recommend this Road Warrior fairing just for the bang for the buck, right? But that being said, you know, there were some categories that we didn't talk about. There's a lot of other factors that we could put in there, such as the aesthetic and the look that you're going for for your bike. The one thing that the FXRT has going for it, because the Road Warrior is such a good fairing, that's why you see almost <laughs> every club style Dyna build right now running that fairing. So you see it a lot, you know? So, I mean, the one thing that the RT fairing has going for it is you just will not see right now as many builds running that fairing. But I, uh, I anticipate that that is about to change very quickly. I feel like give it a year or give it two years and it's already changing. You know, we're already, even here on the East Coast, we're seeing so many more RT fairing builds. So it's definitely going to lose its uh, uniqueness factor, but I don't think it's ever going to lose its coolness factor or its performance factor. So again, like there, there are other factors here besides just bang for the buck and all the five that I mentioned. But if you're on the fence and you have a pretty clear idea of what your riding style is, go, go with the Road Warrior, right? But again, if you know you're trying to crush those miles at high speeds, then I think it's a, a no-brainer. I think it's worth the investment. Go with the RT fairing if that's what you're trying to do, as well as if you like the look of it as well. Because it is, it does get pretty divisive with the look. Like some people are gonna throw me the uh, heart emoji. Some people are gonna throw me the emoji of like the guy throwing up because they can't stand the look. So it's pretty divisive in the club style Dyna community. But yeah, and I guess, you know, if, if you are like running, if you're a new rider, right, and you're trying to make this decision, I think off the bat right now for your build, I would say just throw Road Warrior on there so you could get some wind protection, right? And if you feel like for your riding style, you're wanting a little bit more wind deflection or you're looking to change up the look a little bit, then go to the RT after that because someone will buy your used Road Warrior fairing. You know, the fairing speaks for itself. You're gonna have no problem reselling it. It's never not gonna be a good fairing. So that's my advice if you're a new rider because again, it is way less of a commitment than running an FXRT fairing. If you throw that FXRT fairing on there and you decide that you don't like it, it's not gonna be as easy as having a quick detach and just taking it right off. You're, you're looking to get into some serious wrenching if you're trying to take an FXRT fairing off of a bike. So there's way less of a commitment factor with a Road Warrior. But yeah, that's my advice for someone who's crushed miles on both fairings. And I could do a separate video because a lot of people are also asking me, Hey bro, we see you mixing it up between your Road Warrior and your FXRT fairing Lowrider S. Do you regret the FXRT fairing? I'll make a separate video to talk about that because that has been a very common comment. But shout out to my main man, 
Blade Brown back in the building. I am enjoying these early morning NYC miles with you. Looking forward to seeing what you do with your bike. And why don't we uh, help Blade Brown out? What do you all think? What should he do in regards to a fairing on his 93 FXR? Should he just leave it naked, which I also kind of like? Should he go with something like a T-Sport, Road Warrior? Should he go with something like a quarter fairing, say a gauntlet? Should he just go crazy and go with an FXRT build? Let me know in the comments what should Blade Brown do so he can get a little bit more wind deflection on uh, those higher speeds. As always, thanks for riding with us. Thank you for watching. I had such a blast riding with you guys today. Stay safe out there. Stay low, regardless of what fairing you decide to rock, if you decide to rock a fairing at all. Listen to the Bad Brains. And on that, FX DLS Brooklyn is out.